All right, so this is Avia, Avia, Avia. I'm gonna call it Avia. Uh, A I V A dot A I. Um, this is one of those uh, music AI generation platforms. Um, it's available as a website and as a downloadable uh, app. I think that generally it's used as an AI music generator, um, just taking you through it really quickly. If you hit this create track button um, and roll into preset styles, uh, you have all of these various sort of, you know, songs, styles that you can go with. Let's try synth wave here. Um, you select an emotion. Let's say it's a sad synth wave song. It's less than 30 seconds long and we'll do two compositions. Um, you hit create your track and it will generate a sad synth wave song for you. Um, so it picks a key, F minor, um, and let's take a quick listen to it. Okay, that's enough of that. But what I like about Avia is the fact that there is a built-in DAW that's in here, um, so you can sort of play around with things if you want to. Um, so there's that. That's not what I wanted to talk about today, though. What I did want to talk about is this Influences tab, which is pretty interesting. Uh, this allows you to upload any track of your own. Avia's AI will then listen to it, dissect it and then come up with new ideas based off of it. That's pretty interesting to me. So um, we simply hit this create influence button and you drag a song in. I decided to give it a shot and uploaded my um, emotionally titled hiking underscore trail underscore final underscore rev underscore two dot wave uh, song. It's a really huge hit on Spotify. <laughs> Uh, to see what it would come up with. So I'm going to briefly play the actual track for you. Uh, it's kind of one of those like guitar-based, lo-fi, dusty beats, sort of ambient, sort of mellow kind of tracks. You know the ones. Um, just so that you guys have sort of a baseline, um, and then we'll play what Avia generated. <laughs> You guys all do that, right? Like the final underscore rev underscore two. I'm sure that this got way further than underscore two, but listen. So let's pop over to Avia and see what it generated for us. So it popped out three different compositions for me uh, based off of my track. Um, interestingly, it totally nailed the BPM of the track and it did get the key, so uh, very promising. Um, so let's listen to example one. So that's a no. Uh, let's check out track two. Again, I'm going to take a pass on that one. Uh, and let's check out the third composition. Okay, so overall the sounds are pretty terrible, um, but I think that if you've been working with MIDI for a long time, particularly going back to the days of general MIDI, uh, you know that you kind of have to use your imagination uh, when it comes to sort of templated MIDI sounds. So one of the interesting things about Avia's analysis is that it actually did figure out uh, the various sections of my song in an intro, an A section, a one section, a B section, and an outro. Uh, and it also did figure out roughly the chord structure of it. Point to the AI on that one. Still, that said, the sounds are pretty terrible. So here's what we can do. So taking this third one, which I guess sounded the most promising to me, we'll take that and download it. Um, and we'll download it as orchestrated MIDI, uh, which will allow us to bring it into our DAW and have everything stemmed out. 
Okay, so I have a blank Ableton project here, uh, and I now can take my downloaded orchestrated MIDI and just drop it in. Quick note, if you're an Ableton user, for some reason, I keep running into this thing where if the file is named .midi, Ableton won't read it. I actually have to rename it .mid, and then everything works fine. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is having that problem, but that seems to be a recurring thing for me. So, um, so let's drop it in, and as you can see, there we go. Um, now, the problem, of course, is, is that all of these MIDI files are, they do not have sounds attached to them. So you can play it, you're not going to get any sound. Um, so you then have to go through and sort of figure out what is what. Um, if you open it up, you can kind of generally tell what it is. Like, I can tell that that's the drums just by sort of the busyness of the pattern. Uh, and actually, oh, you know what? It does say drum kit here. Never mind. Um, so... I'm actually just going to delete that because those drums were trash. Um, so uh, this, for example, is our bass line. Um, so at which point I would go through and assign sounds to them. So let me do that real quick, and then we'll hop back. So for our synth sound, uh, I assigned that to Contacts uh, Haifa, uh, which is a free VST. Um, I think it's currently free, actually. I uh, would highly recommend checking it out. It's really cool. It's got some really neat sort of organic -y kind of sounds to it. So let's take a listen and see how that sounds. Um, I doubled that with uh, Ultra Analog Session, uh, which is a um, analog synth thing that I really, really like a lot. Uh, let's take a listen to that combined. So for the bass, I ended up using um, Ample Bass's P Light 2. Um, it's a Fender P style bass emulator. It's funny because I have a bass sitting over there and I love to play bass, but <laughs> there are so many times now where I'm just like, I'm just going to use the Ample Bass because it's just easier sometimes. Uh, so let's take a listen and see how that sounds. So I'll admit the drums were fairly terrible and not really worth salvaging. Um, so I just grabbed a drum loop off of Splice. Um, this is actually Left Field Breaks. The producer Sleepy Fish uh, turned me on to this pack. It's really fantastic. I didn't chop it up or anything, not for this demo. So um, let's just check out how it sounds. <laughs> From those four tracks, the drums, uh, the synths, and the bass, uh, it kind of gave me a vibe of like a 2000s era indie tune. Um, so I decided to grab my guitar and add some stuff to it. So yeah, kind of fun. Of course, that era of indie rock um, requires some vocals. Um, I did not want to spend a lot of time writing lyrics and I did not want to bother a vocalist friend of mine to come over and record vocals for something this kind of silly. So I went over to ChatGPT and I asked it if it could write me lyrics for an indie pop song um, that would be about becoming best friends with an AI and something that was catchy. And it came up with this. Um, <laughs> it's pretty stupid, um, but it works. So for the vocals, I did end up using Melodyne um, to pitch correct everything. That pretty much saves you from having to put an ice pick in your ears while listening to it. Um, I was not spared that mercy. Um, since Melodyne is not an AI tool, uh, I had to go manually go in and pitch correct everything. I only have the basic lowest package of it, um, but it did a really great job and was really intuitive to use. So um, if you're thinking about singing poorly like I do, um, maybe pick up a copy of Melodyne. 
so yeah, that's a look at what you can do with Avia that I'm not entirely sure was intended to be done with Avia. Um, but it's interesting, right? Um, I ended up taking a song that I wrote, giving it to an AI and having it analyze and then write something inspired by my own track um, and then handing it back to me and I wrote a new track based off of that. Um, so did I collaborate with an AI or did I collaborate with myself filtered through an AI? The future is really, really weird. So I've got a couple of other music AI experiment things coming up um, for you guys to check out. So if you haven't, please do hit that like and subscribe. Uh, and like I said, if you are using AI tools as well, please let me know. Uh, I would love to check more of them out. Um, okay, until next time, we'll see you.